Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen here with life coach Daniel Mangana, and this is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today, and uh, Daniel's been very quietly and patiently waiting for me because I was out snowshoeing and got back just a little late today, so thanks for the patience, Daniel. I appreciate that. <laughs> I think uh, I think you could be allowed a little bit of time <laughs> to go and do something fun. Yeah, I guess so. I, I yeah. give you this time today. I appreciate it. Thank you for the blessing. I'm just That's that really kind great. of guy. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, you are that kind of a guy, no doubt. And we were discussing just before we came on that you're that kind of guy in another way because you brought us David Strickle, the steam of David, who has uh, since moved on to other activities. But you also brought us Monique Scott, who is now hosting Wednesdays. And then you have completed the trifecta. And now Debbie Garcia is joining us on Fridays because this is the sad news. Linda Armstrong, she's decided to move on to other stuff. Rita Giganti hasn't decided whether she's coming back. She may be coming back. We'll have to see what happens there. But, hey, if you got to have somebody to go in to bat for Linda, it might as well be Debbie because we found that out <laughs> in one episode. Like, th- that lady's a powerhouse. I don't know oh, where yeah. you found her, but she is a powerhouse. I found her through I found her through Stream of David, just being oh, okay. in, the, in the, streams, the streams world, the world of the stream. There we go. It, it's a it's an amazing thing. I mean, who knew that you could have so much source energy packed into one small body like that? It was just incredible the first time I <laughs> talked to her and the second time and the third time. So, yeah, it's really cool. It's going to be good. And uh, tomorrow, uh, she won't be able to join us tomorrow. We, the, the whole thing came together too quickly, so she'll be joining us a week from tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll get uh, Dean McMurray and Monique Scott joining to do a show together. So they'll both be sitting in. So nice. we're kind of mixing and matching here. This is going to be good stuff. I like the way nice. everything always – and it all falls into place. It is interesting how it always falls into place. Always, always, always. Yeah, that's really cool. So anyway, I have uh, – I believe I have an email – to, to share uh, a couple of emails actually and then i also have a bit of a story to tell so we've got plenty to talk about here but let me go to the emails first and let's see now i i haven't done my review here so i don't remember what's here because like i, I said i was out snowshoeing so you know i didn't have a chance to check all this stuff out but let's see what we've got here um well the first one was just actually uh congratulatory from deborah um congratulating me on my first talk. I gave my first talk in my public speaking career, um, one that I created on my own that I just did on Facebook and got you know, some nice reaction from some students. So that was good. So she was congratulating look, look me on that. You cheeky git. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, taking one step at a time, right? One step at a time. Yeah. And then got an email from, mm-hmm. and I shared this email um, last week. And that email really just was well first of all she gave me the uh she, she gave me the email you'll remember and at the end she said don't read it on the air mm-hmm. and then i got in touch with her afterward i just said her naming i gotta have to blank the name out but <laughs> i'm not doing too well on that on this one sorry about that but uh anyway i followed up with her and she gave permission to let us use it anyway on the air as long as i just didn't mention her name. So I went through and, and in last week's episode, I blanked out her name and I'll blank it out in the one place that I mentioned it here. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I just wanted to kind of mention it because it was a little embarrassing last week. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. reading this thing and I find at the end, oh, geez, we weren't supposed to read it. But she was very kind and uh, appreciative and, and excited, too. That was the other thing that was in her email. She was excited mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, we'd had such a good impact on so many people. So or that she had had such a good impact on so many people. So, yeah. yeah. So, so no real questions there, but just uh, some nice uh, correspondence and, and things that worked out nicely that could have not worked out so nicely. But Nothing stuff. wrong with a bit of correspondence. Especially good correspondence. But yeah, we love all the <laughs> exactly. correspondence from, from the listeners. Really good. And then I got a story to tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to be curious to see what your reaction is. But um, we often talk about people in difficult situations trying to turn things around, trying to... Uh, often get rid of old stuff, old programs that are playing and so forth. And I had a direct experience with that yesterday mm-hmm. for myself. An old, old program came back once again to haunt me. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> this is one that had been started when I was 18 years old. Um, and it has to do with selling. I had tried on four different occasions. I was hired by four different companies over the years to sell for them and 
none of them turned into anything really successful. I was able in most cases to sell a few things, but in each case, I flamed out after a relatively short period of time. The longest one lasted about eight months. And I flamed out largely for reasons that I didn't understand because there are things that I understand now that I didn't understand then. Um, and in fact, that's part of what motivated me to start becoming a public speaker was that kind of experience. Uh, but what it had amounted to was that I would get to, the, to a point where I had to persevere through and I wouldn't persevere through and it would just turn into a complete downward spiral that got worse and worse every time I tried to do it. And what I had done over time was basically built this up into a huge negative spiral that just kept you know, building energy over time, build energy. I calculated it out 45 years. That thing was going 45 wow. years. I mean, it's a long time. And you get something that yucky going that long. It's pretty hard to turn that one around. Um, what helped a lot is I've been doing, as everybody knows, I've been doing uh, a lot of work on myself. And I, obviously I do this show to help uh, raise other people's vibration, working on my own self-love, working on my social connectedness, working on all the things that I know to work on. And I needed all of it. I needed all of it last night. I was so glad that I had been doing that work because it made a really difficult situation easier to handle with wonderful support from my wife, Louise. And I, I couldn't have gotten through without her. And you'll, be, you'll find out why in a moment. Um, but I, it had come up because I'm trying to get myself out there as a public speaker. And especially when you're getting going, there's some selling that's involved in that. And once again, the demons were coming up to haunt me. So I was starting to get depressed about it. And I was starting to go into that negative spiral. And this time I recognized it for what it was and re realized I had to do something about it. And I was trying to do all the little things that I knew to do. I was trying to do affirmations. I was... You know, doing all the, the meditations and exercises and everything I needed to do, and none of it was working. I couldn't break out of the spiral. So finally, I, I just did one of the best things I can do. I talked to my wife because I'm not only is she my wife, but she's also a trained psychotherapist. I mean, it's nice to have a psychotherapist in the family. And I mean that quite sincerely. <laughs> and so she actually helped me walk through to the thing that I needed to, needed to do. And the reason I'm bringing this up is it's really interesting to know what happens when you're in the midst of dealing with something that's got that much negative emotion built up in it. Because what happens is the mental processes break down. The mental processes break down to the point where they don't even function anymore. I actually understood for the first time in my life what it was like, what it felt like to be crazy. Because my mind was just out of control. Like, most of my attention was on blackness with like little thoughts, you know, fragments of thoughts that were just out of reach and feeling totally powerless. It was a mm -hmm. miserable place to be in. And what I needed to do was I needed to, in some way, get myself to say and to start believing I'm going to succeed. I trust that everything is going to work out well. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get those words out of my mouth, Daniel. Wow. I couldn't literally utter those words. L Louise had to lead me through them practically word for word. And the first time that I was able to get through the entire sentence, I mean, you would have thought that I was carrying a, a 150 pound pack up Mount Everest with how much effort I put in to get those words out. It was like, I trust that. I mean, it was that kind of an emotional thing wow. going on. It was huge. And if I didn't have her there, I'm not sure I would have gotten through it. Mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't have gotten through it without all the work I've been doing on myself. Mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't have gotten through it without the social connections I've been building up. I, I, I mean, all this stuff fed into it. And I finally got that sentence out after all that effort. And I can't say all of the stress went away. It didn't, but it reduced substantially. And then after about three minutes of heavy breathing, then I tried saying it again. And it was easier to come out the second time. And then I could start saying it a few times and the belief started to kick in. Mm -hmm. And I started to feel it a little bit more and a little bit more. And this is where I really appreciated all the work I've been doing on myself. Because from that point on, the acceleration was pretty quick. So mm -hmm. about 10 minutes later, I was feeling really good. I mean, I wasn't That's feeling beautiful. at the top of my game, but I was, you know, uh, uh, if, the, if the scale is 1 to 20 and 20 is high vibe, I was like, you know, 17. I was doing pretty good at that point. I think yeah. that's, that's a pretty good show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, you can't really ask for a whole lot more than that, no. right? But boy, oh boy, did that experience 
help me to appreciate just, first of all, how powerful these negative vibrations can be if we allow them to build and build and build over time, which I had Mm -hmm. done. And secondly, I now have a better uh, level of sympathy for people who say, I can't break through because I know Mm -hmm. what that felt like. I literally couldn't break through. I needed a lot of help to break through. It was it was a, a big deal. So that's my my manifestation story for the day. <laughs> I manifest I, a little I, better mental health. <laughs> a little better. I think that's manifesting a, a blinking battle with the forces of evil. <laughs> much, the that's what side. it felt like. Yeah, that's what it sounds like too. I think there's I mean, someone that you know has has the the dance with with depression from time to time too. I think it's easy to lose sight of the fact that just because we've done work on ourselves doesn't automatically mean that things just turn out rosy. Right. It's all about being resourced to be able to, to deal with it. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think that I was so glad to have those resources. Oh my God, was I glad yeah. to have them. Yeah. yeah. Every single day that I had done mirror work or done a show with you guys or gone out and done something that was fun and you know done a nature walk whatever i mean it all came into play it all gave me little bits of support that just added up to a huge amount of support so i i think i need to also take a moment to say thank you for all listeners who have been listening all this time because you know over the years you guys have also provided support that all fed, also fed into it that made on, on some level that i couldn't even begin to define or describe that provided support uh, support came from every single aspect of my experience in life and i needed all of it so you're absolutely right the resources make a huge difference when we're dealing with that stuff uh, the part that really amazed me after the fact was realizing i was experiencing insanity i didn't mm. I, I didn't know what it meant before to be insane now i have a better idea of what it is like it's pretty scary <laughs> it's it's really really scary i mean it's it's terrifying but um, yeah, I came through it. And then my microphone is now going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it but flying up into the air. <laughs> so what would you say was the number one thing that helped you get through that? Because I think it's great. I think if people have something that they can go to mentally as a resource of where to start the dance with, with these I challenges think, when they come up. I think my experience proved the value of that social connection. In this case, it was my wife, my best social connection. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was very grateful that she had the trained background that she had, but having somebody that I could go to who I knew understand the subject matter of law of attraction, vibration, and so forth, understand also, um, what it meant to be dealing with, you know, old programs that were playing and had Mm -hmm. some training actually. Um, I mean, that was really a benefit, but even if, if you, if the person you have in your social connection doesn't have that training, just knowing this stuff and understanding the basics of doing a pivot and, and, you know, doing what, what the power is behind doing meditations and all that kind of stuff. Someone who has that kind of, of background and understanding that you have a deep connection with that person is immensely helpful. I mean, literally I couldn't have gotten through it without her because uh, mm-hmm. my, my, I was insane for you know a two minute time or something like that i was <laughs> my brain was not functioning properly mm. it, it, you know I, i'm sure what would have happened if i didn't have somebody like that is i just would have gone into a deeper depression mm-hmm. and i wouldn't have stayed in the insane point long enough because i would have turned away from that and probably turned towards something terribly nasty or whatever but I, I, at least it would have been something where my brain was functioning you know so mm-hmm. that would have been working out i don't call that working out i'm not sure what that is it would have been a slight improvement let's put it that way yeah (laughs) but but i wouldn't have had the result that i had without having somebody that i was deeply connected with help me through it that social connection i've been talking about that a lot lately and boy did that come through i really appreciated in a big way how important that social connection is because it Mm. isn't so much needing the social connections when we're up it's it's needing them when we're down yeah right i think this really need it yeah, because I, I think when we understand, again, having those resources gives us the position to be able to take a look and see what do we need. And then what we know what we need, we can actually then go into our network of people who may not even be directly tackling our challenge, but maybe even the person that gives us space for us to be able to find our own way through or to go and get another resource. You know, when we're looking at the network, sometimes we can get caught up in the first degree of separation, the first degree of connection, 
and lose sight of the degrees of separation between the people that you can go and connect. So for example, yeah. just, and, and it doesn't always have to be a personal relationship too. Everyone that listens to your show now has access to the network that you've set up of resources sure. for them to be able to access resources and them too. So there's been people that have said things on the show and I've actually said, you know what, this will be a great guest. So they've been connected to you listening to your show. Yeah. Through Steve Roll, who we know through Faith <laughs> Faith Aries, right. brings me up on the show, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then I might say, I've got someone that can answer that question. I've got someone that can actually add that substance to the show. So I'd love to invite people not to get caught up on the network necessarily being this person that I know. It can be a show that I listen to. It can be a book that I read. It can be a website or a blog that I read. And that can actually create opening you up to another network that's going to expand and give you the support that you need to go and create what you want. It's a great point because that's how we actually build the breadth of the social connections. Because it's not just having, if, if I, all I had was just Louise to lean on, that, well, she probably could have helped me through just because of her training, but that's not really good for her to have her carry that whole weight. But when I have a broader network that I'm drawing upon, now she's just helping me with one thing. And it, it, that that's entirely different, you know. So no matter who that person is, if, if it's a person you're close to who's helping you, if you're not if you're not a dead weight on them, if you're just there for you know you need them that one moment, and that's that's when they're going to help you. First of all, they're going to give you your, their best help. Then, mm -hmm. second of all, they're not going to feel like they're being taken advantage of. Mm. It, they're going to feel more like, oh God, I'm so glad I could I could help you. Mm. And literally, while we're I told you we were snowshoeing. Um, while we were out there, we took a, a break halfway through and she said to me, you know, I'm really proud of you. I said, why is that? She says, because you opened up and you addressed all that and asked for my help. And I was able to give you help. And I was really, really glad I was able to help you. You know, you don't get that reaction from somebody if you're dumping on them. You only get that reaction when they're there to help you when you really need the help. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, a, that's a, a, a key piece of it. I mentioned the whole idea about dumping on people because I also have been through something lately with an ex-friend, I've actually mentioned that case before here on the show, who in many ways is a good friend, but he does have a tendency to dump on people. Mm. And he has l ruined one marriage that way. Oh, he wow. is in the process of ruining a second marriage. <laughs> His current marriage is on the rocks, and I might just mean to laugh. Survive. I don't mean to laugh, but... But I understand why you're laughing, though, because... It, it's always amazing when we look outside, you know, at somebody who's dealing with stuff like that and we see the pattern and we, if it's like a piece of it that says, why don't you see what's going on? And it's not like it hasn't been pointed out to him. I pointed it out to him even before we broke our, our friendship when he broke our friendship. Mm -hmm. um, and what he, what he broke his friend, our friendship with was we were actually going to start a venture together. And a few days before we were going to launch, he went off on me. I mm. mean, just completely lost it. Basically, he was trying to start a fight and he wasn't going to be satisfied until we were in a screaming match. Hmm. And by the time I was done with that, first of all, I was shaking. Second of all, I realized I couldn't go into business with this guy because he was going to end up managing a bunch of people. And I couldn't, I, I wouldn't be able to live with myself if I knew that I had helped put him in a position of doing the same thing to a whole bunch of other people. Thirdly, I found out afterward that it had been affecting my wife and she hadn't told me about it. And I, well, I couldn't allow that to continue. And th there were mm -hmm. other factors too. So basically that broke it. And and the day we were supposed to launch, I got, I, I had a meeting with him and with the third guy who was supposed to be the third partner and said, I'm sorry, I, I have to drop out of this project. I didn't even give him a reason for it because I was just very emotionally distraught at the time. Mm -hmm. But my point of bringing all that stuff is, bring, bring it up is, this is why you don't want to dump on people. Because <laughs> and relationships. And he did, he ended our relationship. We had been friends for 25 years wow somewhere on the order of 25 years i mean it was a long time mm. and he ruined our, our friendship that wasn't the only time he had dumped on me by the way there were a number of them that was the one that had been like the tipping point and this is something else that i learned i didn't know happened if a person is abusing another person mentally emotionally physically whatever um in this case it was sort of a mental uh, emotional abuse and they're doing it repeatedly over time now bear in mind this is somebody who the rest of the time he'll treat you in a very loving way so it's very schizophrenic mm. but 
every once in a while, he goes off on you. When you get that repeated experience over and over again, it's almost like there is a tolerance that keeps reducing and reducing and reducing and reducing so that you eventually get to the point where the next time that the person goes off on you, it creates a searing, and I mean that word literally, S-E-E-R-I-N-G, a searing pain in your head. <laughs> Seriously, it, 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 it's like, it's almost like, if you could just imagine putting your hand on a red hot burner, mm -hmm. that's the way your head feels. When you reach this point of saturation where you've just been abused so many times, it just, it, it just sears you. It's screaming pain. It's kind of like Chinese water torture, if you know what I mean. It, it just yeah. keeps building up and building up and building up and building trip, up. Trip, 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 trip. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that was something else that I learned, that there is a cumulative effect to basically dumping on people. Mm -hmm. So two basic ways of saying, don't dump on people. You don't build your social connections up to dump on people. You, you take responsibility for your own emotions. You take responsibility for your own ability to release anger, to release depression, to release frustration, to release fear, and so forth. And you, the only time that you lean on somebody is when you're having trouble doing that and you ask them for help in learning how to do that, not to dump it onto them. There's a big mm. difference there. And that's, that's what I'm trying to convey here. And I think what this is also speaking to is people that are waiting for someone else to save them. And yes. what I find, what I find wholly, and, and I, I find this one particularly challenging to do as well, because I have to put so much energy into like connections with people right. when that connection, which is already laboring for me, <laughs> is then overloaded with now save me. They'll give me the answers and do all of the things. I'm just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, people aren't always necessarily dumping per se, Sometimes it's even just like, ah, let's be friends. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like, yes. ah, let's be friends. I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 stop, <laughs> stop, just give me a chance to breathe. And, and this is, <laughs> so the dumping isn't necessarily like negatively yapping at people. Dumping can also <laughs> quite literally be like dumping your love on someone as well. <laughs> like mm, you could dump too true. much attention. Yeah. Being a clingy, a clingy cling a lot. You know, so there are there are a couple of angles to this. They're not both necessarily negative, but it is just something I think for us to just to have in mind that <laughs> when you're yapping on someone's energy, then yeah. there may be a, a pullback. <laughs> And the good news is that we can, it, it's not difficult for us to know what the difference is. Mm. Because the difference is who, like you say, who's responsible, who's taking responsibility for the emotion. Mm. If you're trying to get the other person to take responsibility for the emotion, then you're, the, you're on the wrong side of the fence. Mm. If you're trying to take responsibility for your own emotion, and maybe you don't really know how to do it yet or you know whatever, you're trying to learn it yourself and you just need a little help to learn it. That's a different kettle of fish. Mm. And, and anybody who's willing to help you can tell the difference instantly. It's not like, I mean, you're a coach. You, you deal with this all the time. I'm sure in one way or another, you don't have any trouble deciding whether or not a person is trying to do the work themselves or trying to lean on you to do the work for them. This is not a difficult thing to divine, is it? Mm. I mean, it's pretty simple. <sighs> But simplicity is simple, and if it was simple, then we wouldn't have all the drama and the complication that we're feeding off, right? <laughs> so, okay, touche, you're right. It's like, <laughs> but if it's simple, where is the drama? Without the drama, what do I do? <laughs> the drama is my identity. Ah! <laughs> so, I think when, we, when we're ready to own, and you know, there's this whole thing of owning when we're at to, to move forward. Now, I was working with some stuff that had come up the other day around victimhood and i mm. i didn't realize that it was all victim stuff and i i had this really pretty cover for it but i had a an emptying session with my friend chris we we do that every every um every, every weekend and as i sat there and and got into it i was like oh what's really happening is underneath all of this story boxing was that I just wanted to be a little victim and I had this victim thing going on. But when I was able to look at that and understand what it was, guess what I could do? I could start to create an effective path right. to moving beyond it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the effective path to moving beyond it included me accepting <laughs> that that's what I was doing in the first place. But unless we are open to, unless we're open to accept ourselves, lovingly accept ourselves where we're at, we're going to end up getting caught in more of the blame and the guilt and the beating ourselves up, which is just another backdoor way for the same icky energy to still stay in our experience, you know? That's so. Right. Yeah. Anyway, the whole thing I think is is hilarious if we if we <laughs> if we get get caught up in it. But how many well, it's times hilarious when we're caught? looking outside of it when we're in the middle? Oh yeah, it's not terribly hilarious, oh, no. but outside of it, it's great. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm sure you could laugh back at your whole experience yesterday. Absolutely. Now, oh yeah. Now you can do that before. <laughs> Forget that. Not happening. Very While well. sitting in the in the darkness, it's like I'm in the darkness. No, no, I can't. <laughs> Definitely. Yep. Yeah. That's the way it works. That's the mm-hmm. way it works. That was the other thing that was really interesting about it. Because like I said, I came out of it pretty quickly. Like, you know, 10 minutes later, I was feeling really good. Mm-hmm. And I had been pretty much at the pit. So, you know, we're talking like a massive change on the emotional guidance scale, if you want to call it that. Mm-hmm. In the past, that would have shaken me up. Actually, it didn't shake me up this time. That was one mm-hmm. of the, my clues that I've really been doing a lot of work on myself. Because it was mm-hmm. easy. It was an easy transition. That's mm-hmm. that. I want to emphasize that part. When you do all this work for yourself, on yourself, getting yourself into a better place, even if you don't see it happening, it adds up. Mm -hmm. It really pays off. You don't necessarily know when the payoff is coming, but Mm -hmm. I found out one place where the payoff came. It came last night, and it was huge. It was really huge. It just made it so much easier. And guess what that is? It's an opportunity for you to have appreciation for the experience. Which I absolutely have. You've got a gratitude point now. Yeah, hugely. That's part of the reason why I wanted to tell the story, too. It was a way of re-appreciating what I went through and what I learned mm-hmm. from it, what I got out of it. Because you're right, that gratitude part, part is just it's a big, big part. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you kind of, you don't waste it, but you you, you miss out on what you don't you waste it, but you waste it. it. <laughs> sort of, yeah. <laughs> you don't waste it, but... You waste it, but you don't oh, really you waste, waste it. it. <laughs> it's kind of wasted, but it's not. No, I get that completely. And, you know, it's one of those things that we can, again, just that simple reframe. It's it's not really wasted, but it is kind of wasted. And, and, and that's, I believe, one of those one of those points where we can get lost in just telling the truth about a situation that Mm -hmm. we wasted it. And, but we can do that without judging ourselves. Like I'm not judging myself for wasting it. I'm accepting. Okay. I'm way, I wasted it in so much as that it didn't really add to the experience in a way that actually adds to my experience. Mm -hmm. So now that I understand that I can, I can start to make effective choices going forward about what I want to do. Right. I'm no longer caught in the narratives and the stories of it. I'm like, okay, so that's something that happened before. It's not happening now. Why is it not happening now? Because I've actually made the choice to say, okay, I'm not going to keep going down that same path, making those same choices and having those same experiences. That power is amazing too. That power of choice. That's what you're describing. You make it sound so simple when you say that, but Mm -hmm. it is, it's almost like trying to describe a hurricane as simple. (laughs) It Mm -hmm. is simple. It's just wind blowing. (laughs) But, but when you're in the middle of a hurricane, it doesn't seem simple at all. Nope. And yet that's, it it is, it's just a simple thing. It's just, there's wind blowing very, very fast. That's it. Yeah. But simple things can have big, big effects. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Simple things oh, yeah. can have big effects. And those big effects aren't always necessarily what we'd like, but they're definitely going to add to our life in new ways. By the way, I'll, I'll tell a little subtext story that kind of goes along with it to illustrate what you just said. Uh, because, like I said yesterday, before I had this climactic event, um, I was feeling pretty down. Um, I'd done the show a few hours earlier, and that had helped. The show always helps. But I'd kind of slipped back down and... Up until doing the show that day, I'd had kind of a so-so day. So having the show was great. But, you know, my, I guess my my point is my overall pattern was kind of, uh, it wasn't really low vibe, but it certainly wasn't high vibe at all. And things weren't quite working. I wasn't able to get things working the way I wanted to. I, had, I, I, was, I was trying to figure out, for instance, who to get as the new Friday co-host because I knew Linda was going to leave. And my early forays in that uh, just wasn't working out the way I was wanting it to. I wasn't getting the kind of... Uh, 
input I was looking for. I wasn't um, getting the kind of ideas I was looking for. I hadn't thought of Debbie yet. And then leading in, that was leading into yesterday. Yesterday, I thought of Debbie. I reached out to Debbie. Uh, we had a quick exchange and we agreed to talk today. But kind of went through the rest of the day feeling in that yucky place. Had the event last night. Came out of it feeling really good. And today I woke up feeling very, very good. And came time to do the conversation with Debbie and it was fluid. Hmm. It, was, it just, no, I would kind of expect that just because of who Debbie is. Yeah, but, Debbie Debbie would carry a show. <laughs> yeah, well, easily, yeah. But but the point is that I was receptive. I was in a place where I, I could be there for that. If mm-hmm. I hadn't done that kind of work the previous night, I'm not sure how that would have worked out. She would have been fine. I may not have been. And who knows what kind of vibe that would have created. But because I was also in a good vibe in a good place, our conversation went really well. And we're both pretty jazzed about the fact that she's coming onto the show. And we're, we're going to con- kind of um, connect her show, our show into her network as well. So it's going to be like a, a mutual thing going on there. Oh, nice. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, it's going to be great. That happened. This is like a little side effect. But that happened because I went through that thing last night. Mm. I got myself through it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I, I, I hesitate to think what would have happened if I hadn't gotten through that. I mean, I'm not sure it would have worked out as well today as it did. But, but you know what? I just want to call attention to the fact that you were supported too, and you were open to that support. Yes. Sometimes we go through these dark nights of the soul, these challenges, challenging experiences, and we lose sight of the fact that people are actually wanting to help us, wanting to support us, wanting to have our back as we're going through it. So we don't have to do it alone. Whether that is a direct resource of someone that's around you or a resource that's available to you, like this show every day mm-hmm. with replays that they can watch on YouTube or that's if they true. have the app. Yeah, absolutely. And sounds like a little bit of a segue there. So I'm <laughs> that. Dun, dun, dun. There are two ways, there, there are two ways we actually want to take advantage of that one. The first one is to kind of play the theme that you sp- spoke about earlier, and that is sending in stuff through the app, sending in the emails, mm-hmm. because I mean, First of all, that's where we get some great content from. Definitely. Some excellent conversations off of that. And sometimes we can actually help somebody directly, which is really, really cool when that happens. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we even get an email like the person who I will not name, like we got last week, talking about all the amazing things that went on in her life just listening to the show. I mean, sometimes we get feedback like that. You know, there's all kinds of reasons that we get this this input. But, oh, man, I I wish I could find a way to just reach out to every single listener and say, get it, and then send in the questions. Because everybody's life gets better when you do it. Mm-hmm. So since I can't do that, I'll just sell it for you. you know, if you have, haven't downloaded the app, download the app and send in a question. We'll, I'll just leave the message at that. Um, so that's the first reason. The second reason is there is a, a goodie coming along that I'm working on right now. I've mentioned it a couple of times before. But uh, back in 2018, myself, some of the co-hosts I had at that point, and uh, some other coaches and so forth, we did a, a group book a collection of manifestation stories, law of attraction, manifestation stories. Mm -hmm. And it got published and uh, it actually briefly reached number one on one of the categories in Amazon, which was cool. And I'm putting it into the app. Nice. Gifting it into the app. And there are 55 stories in this book. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work getting it in there. So I think I've got about 15 or 20 of them in there so far, and it's going to take a while to get the rest in, but you want to have the app for that. Because it will, your app will automatically update when we've got all that stuff loaded in. And then you're going to have all the talk about inspiration. You talked about you know, listening to YouTube videos and so forth. You'll have all these inspirational stories of what other people went through telling their stories about how amazing things happen in their lives just because they remembered to rely upon the law of attraction. Mm. Pretty cool stuff. So, Very yeah, cool stuff. Two really good reasons to get the LOA Today app. Um, once again, I'll make sure that the link for download is included in the description of the show so that you don't have to go looking for it. And uh, by the way, check us out on YouTube also. You actually get to see what we look like as we do these shows. Oh, yes. Daniel's giving you the wink, wink, nod, nod. So, you know, take advantage of that as well. Click the little silver bell, too, so you can get notified whenever that we are not online. <laughs> so, segue noted and taken advantage of. What can I say? They call me the segue king. Not necessarily a great ruler, but has a crowd on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put it this way. You, you're getting really good at them now. You're a little bit rough well, uh, around the edges, and, and you've gotten very smooth on it. So, Well, what can I say? You know, yeah. when your heart's there, <laughs> and you get bullied That's enough true. times for the, for the crap <laughs> ones, you, you step your game up after a while. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I think what happens is you learn to laugh at yourself after a while. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really what happens. Laughter is yeah. definitely a big one on that oh. <laughs> being affected. Because <laughs> they were horrid. La- oh, laughter wow. is also good in general. I mean, mm-hmm. it was probably the first high vibe feeling I had after, you know, during last night's uh, episode. You know, as mm-hmm. of, just as I'm coming through it, I was able to start laughing at it pretty quickly. And boy, was that a nice vibe lifter. And mm. Especially after going through that that darkness. Mm. But yeah, laugh, laugh, being able to laugh, because it's a release, right? When you, when you laugh, you release. When we're laughing at something, we're finding something humorous. And usually that something humorous has some sort of a pain element associated with it. And we're releasing on that pain element. I think that's why it just raises us right back up again. So... You don't mm-hmm. really want to be laughing at somebody. You know, no, you that's not to... very nice. That yeah. Make your toe rag. We're not toe rags around here. So. Exactly. No toe ragging people or hand ragging or any kind of ragging or towing. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that one, so that's good. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I made it up on the spot. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, um, so let's see, where do we want to go with it today? I, I, that was all I had really thought about for talking about in the show today, but uh, let's see what else we can go into. Um, well, we are having a lot of changes going on in, in personnel. Uh, Monique, of course, came in to do Wednesdays. Now that Cindy's doing her um, sabbatical, and uh, I, I have a feeling Cindy is going to come back. I don't know for sure yet, but I think she is. Um, and then Fridays, of course, Linda has decided she's going to move on and we're going to get Debbie in there. Rita may actually be coming back too, which kind of surprised me because I reached out to Rita after Linda told me she was going to leave because Linda brought Rita in. They're, they're really good friends. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought maybe she might want to leave, but she says, no, 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 that won't influence my decision at all. I'm, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do, but that won't have anything to do with it. Mm-hmm. And she sounded pretty upbeat about it. So she may be back. And Rita's cool. I, I like Rita a lot. In fact, I, I'm really kind of looking forward to Rita and Debbie being in the same venue because Debbie's a powerhouse. Mm-hmm. And well, I don't know if you know Rita's story. Rita is the daughter of Vinnie Giganti, who used to be the head of the crime families in New York City back in the late 1980s and early 1990s. She comes from a pretty challenging background, to say the least. And what has emerged from that background is just a phenomenal person. Mm-hmm. Just I mean, she's so New York, first of all. I mean, the way she talks is just pure New York. Mm-hmm. And and she's got that, and, and she's Italian, you know, because it's, you know, mafia background, you have, you're, you're Italian. And the combination, she is one of the most grounded people I've ever heard on the show, which is odd because I say it's odd because she doesn't describe herself as, as grounded. She says her head's in the cloud. She doesn't sound <laughs> in the clouds at all. She sounds grounded all the time. It's just an mm-hmm. amazing thing. And she's also one of the best psychics I've ever heard. I mean, she she nailed Alex's ailment. Our friend Alex, who couldn't be here today either, Alex went through some surgery last week, and she's recovering from that. Back last August, before Alex knew there was anything wrong, Rita said, do you have something going on in your chest? That was the first clue that Alex got that there was something wrong wow. and that, that she's now being treated oh. for. Yeah. Rita nailed it before the doctors knew about it. That's crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. I mean, she, Alex has seen doctors on a number of occasions about. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I haven't even known about these things that long, but I know that she's had a lot of times when she was like, I didn't know what was going on. And, and this yeah. is where it came. Yeah. And, and Rita nailed it. Just absolutely nailed it. And that's not the only thing she's gotten right. She's gotten a lot of stuff right. People have, writ- have written back, you know, after they sent in a question and Rita answered the question, they said, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of it about that way, but boy, you got that one right. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, that, that's a very common response on Rita. So I'm thinking Rita and Debbie in the same show. That's, I, I, I can't even begin to think how that's going to work, except that it's going to be amazing just because they're, they're such strong personalities. Hmm. positive personalities but strong personalities so i guess what i'm saying is there's a lot of cool shifting and changing going on here on the show and i think there's going to be more as time goes on but i'm i, I mentioned cindy maybe coming back if she does i'm trying to imagine cindy and monique on the same show and every time i think about that one i smile that's because, gonna be great th- seriously think about that one think about those two on the same show together because they're both such upbeat positive people I mean, hmm. you you can't shake either one of them. You have to, well, if you really work at it, you can, but they'll always find a way. The two of them always find a way to find the optimistic side, the glass half full side of any situation. 
Mm-hmm. You know, two of them on, on the same show, I don't know. I might have a heart attack or something just because I can all upset it. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. I'm not actually going to do that. But the point is, I mean, it's going to be such a high vibe show. It's going to be crazy. So I'm, I'm really hoping Cindy comes back because that's going to be quite a combination. So good things happening. Good things mm-hmm. happening overall. Oh, something else has been going on. This isn't getting a lot of, we've, we've talked a lot of, uh, here on the show over the last year since the COVID epidemic uh, kicked into gear about all the challenges that have been going on society-wide. It's not getting a lot of attention, but the virus is on the decline. I'm going to stay out of that one, Mr. Wolf. Okay. <laughs> well, well, because it is. Yeah, but I mean... Uh, well then, all right. I'll, I'll just say it. You can stay quiet. <laughs> I just, but it was a bit predictable that when certain things came together, that was going to happen. I don't want to get the show in any trouble with my opinions on this matter, but <laughs> it's like <laughs> then, then, then I'll, I'll say it. You can stay quiet. Okay. I'm going to stay be- quiet. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll I'll, focus I'll, on the happy positivity of it. But it was a bit predictable. From it, it, is predictable. it is a bit predictable. Yeah. What the part that I I find to be predictable for us, not so predictable for the right for the greater society, is mm-hmm. there hasn't been enough vaccination going on to explain it through vaccination. There has been some. It's been improvement, but not enough from their perspective. They're saying no, there's not enough out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard some claims that there's more social distancing going on, although I don't see any evidence of it. So I'm not sure where that's coming from. Um, <laughs> I think I mentioned to you last week that there was a doctor who said that spring was coming. That's going to actually make a difference. I haven't quite figured out why that makes a difference, but that's what he said. And, <laughs> you know, I guess what I, my point is they're, they're reaching really hard. Now, the latest thing they said uh, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, we had the Super Bowl here in the United States. There was going mm-hmm. to be the Super Bowl spreader. It was going to be the super spreader, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the Super Bowl the incidence of COVID infections has dropped in half. So much for the super spreader. So it's kind of like they're running out of reasons that work from their perspective. And I'm, I'm smiling at that because I know what's left. What's left is vibration, but they're going to go there. But nevertheless, it's happening. Vibrations bring this thing down. People are taking that collective breath. People are feeling better about themselves. They don't necessarily know what, what they're doing that way, but it's leading to this unexpected improvement. And mm-hmm. I just smile whenever I think about it. So there, I said it. You didn't have to say anything. I said it all myself. No problem. Okay. We move on to something else. <laughs> we move on to something <laughs> that I feel safe not getting us That's right. Yeah. down for. <laughs> we don't want to get you knocked down. We won't do yeah. that. But I just think it's cool. I think it's really great that you know this is all happening. Somewhere along the line, someone's going to say, hmm, I wonder if there's another factor. Mm-hmm. And I'll be watching eagerly to see if they figure out what the factor is. Maybe they'll even call me. I'm not counting on it. But... <laughs> Maybe. Oh, and I also reached out to um, somebody who was on the show last May. She is a uh, medical researcher. Mm-hmm. Who, oh, um, did it wasn't that the one that was studying about the placebo effect? That's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. I reached out to her. I haven't heard. I haven't heard back from her yet, but I have reached out to her. I finally sent the message out. I'm hoping I'll get a message in a, in a few days. She's normally mm-hmm. fairly quick to get back to me, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how long it takes. If, if she takes a while to get back to me, I think that's another cue that they're uncomfortable with what the real reason is. <laughs> She's trying to figure out, she and her colleagues are trying to figure out how do we spin this thing because mm-hmm. the results tell us something we don't want to have. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my speculation. So anyway, okay. So let's see what else is going on. That's um, I, let, let's, let's put that issue aside and just talk about in general, Do you get the feeling that I'm getting just people are feeling better? Forget about COVID just in general, like, like people are just feeling better about themselves. I'm getting that feeling a lot. More and more people that I talk to, especially people who don't know the podcast, Mm -hmm. who don't realize that I do this podcast, but I just see it on their faces. I hear it in the tone of their voice. I see it in their behavior patterns. People Mm -hmm. are just feeling better about themselves, about what's going on in life. And I'm excited by that. I think it's really cool. Maybe it's what I've been attracting. Maybe I'm just attracting people to me who are feeling better and I'm not attracting the ones who are feeling worse. I don't know, but that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing more and more of it. I think that for sure, that's a, a, a big factor. Uh, and I feel that that big, that factor comes into play 
because of other factors that are already in play and that what we're seeing is a vibration following on from a change in narrative mm-hmm. basically yeah. yeah so yeah i obviously it's, it's definitely vibration that is coming down to but that vibration has changed be- because <laughs> the narrative has changed so this is true yeah that's why i'm just like yeah i'm just gonna <laughs> Yeah, I know. We don't want to go much further than that. We stay away from anything that's, you know, politics or news or any of that kind yeah, of we say all stuff. That. But, uh, yeah, it's, I, I think it is important to note that people are inexplicably happier. Let's put it that way. They're yes. Inexplicably happier. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and are being allowed to be happy. I think there's less suffocation. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I describe that as taking a collective breath, but that might be underselling it a little bit. There, there's a sense of let's let people be people. Let's mm-hmm. let's respect people. You know, here, here's a small example. It's not that small, but it's fairly small compared to the wider scheme of things. Um, the late Alex Trebek, the host of Jeopardy, passed mm-hmm. away um, toward the end of 2020, and they've been auditioning new hosts. I guess lately the executive producer, Mike Richards, has been doing it. And before that, Ken Jennings was doing it. And then they've got a bunch of people lined up afterward. And they're, I guess they're going to pick who's the best person to be the, the, the host. But what both Ken and Mike have been doing so far, and I imagine the others are going to do as well, they are tipping their hat to Alex at the end of every show, mm. um, usually to something that he said. And it, almost invariably, the, the various things that Alex left us with in terms of the thoughts that they're um, that they're harping on are thoughts of, you know, we can pull together, we can come through stuff and, and be better off as a, as a, a culture, as a people. And it's such a refreshing thing to hear that on television. Mm. We get so much of the other kind of stuff. So hearing that, that's just one more reason to feel hopeful. I think one more reason to feel grateful that, yeah, there's, there's, there are other voices coming through and those other voices are, Positive? Do I dare say the word? <laughs> they are mm-hmm. positive. They're they're on a feel good plane. How can that not have good effect? Especially when we know that positive stuff is so much more powerful than negative. It's I I don't know. I, maybe I'm just becoming a Pollyanna. Who knows? I wouldn't mind that actually. <laughs> I don't mind being a Pollyanna. There are worse things in life. There are worse things in life than being overly. Po- can you be overly positive? Even I don't no, think you can be very positive. Not really. No. I think you um, can be positive to a level that makes other people feel uncomfortable. Sure. But that's them. That's not me. <laughs> yeah, that's your problem. Oh, you have a problem with me being too positive? That sucks for you, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little screwdriver action there. Oh, yeah, just screw it in a little bit. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, I agree with you. I don't think there's, there's any way to be too positive, um, too upbeat, too high. Yeah, I mean, look, but there are some people that talk about people that are happy all the time, they're pretending, but that's not real positivity. That's masking really. yeah. sadness with pseudo positivity. We're talking about mm-hmm. really, really, being, it. really being positive, really yeah. being happy, not faking it right being it then there's there's not too much and if more people were just allowing themselves to just be happy i think the world would be a happier place you know along these lines i actually was thinking about something uh like i need another project right now but this is the way my mind usually works i always have some new project idea and the latest one has to do with people like affirmations right and affirmations are okay i mean i've used them um there are limits to them but i was thinking how do you make them better because, I mean, we, we both know how affirmations are usually done. And I'm thinking, it, it, I think the reason I don't, I'm not crazy about affirmations is they don't go far enough for me. But mm-hmm. how do I take them farther? And I was thinking about that. I realized there's a, there's a component that usually gets left out when somebody's presenting um, conversations about affirmations or suggestions about do these affirmations or maybe even guiding you through affirmations. And that's the feeling component. It's always, here's the message. Here are the words that I want you to use, but not so much emphasis on here's how it feels. And so I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what can be done to make affirmations more feel-based. Do you know what? 
I think that if it's not got feeling in it, it's not even an affirmation anyway. <laughs> well, fair point. It's, it's, yes. it's just words. I am happy and full of joy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I believe that one. <laughs> yeah. Happy mad. That's not an affirmation. It's a BS proclamation. Words yeah. with no intent. I think the intentionality and intentionality is, is a, a moving feeling, a feeling moving towards a specific outcome, no matter how overarching or macro that, 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 that outcome is, is what makes an affirmation an affirmation and separates it from words I say in the mirror in the morning. In fact, you used the word narrative before, which is another word for story. I think an affirmation by itself isn't as powerful, even if you have an emotion attached to it, isn't as powerful as a story. So I'm thinking if we can turn affirmations into narratives, into Mm storylines, not just one sentence narratives, but, Mm -hmm. you know, five, 10, 15, 20 sentence narratives that actually paint a scene and, and tell a story about what happens in that scene, not just a single static image, but movement and event and, you know, things happening mm-hmm. and then have included in that how it feels. I have a feeling that's going to be a much more powerful thing. I, I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet, but I'm pretty sure there's got to be a way to do that. I mean, for me, the power of an affirmation is to step in and create a change in the narrative, in the story, okay. to okay. build out a new story. I use affirmations to disrupt my current story and to introduce new characters and scenery so that the overall story changes. Ah, I suppose what, you know, my, what comes up for me as you're speaking is that you're talking about just jumping straight to the new story, just creating that new story. Yeah. Yeah. I guess consciously stepping into relationship as to what the story is, because for most of us, our relationship to the story is not conscious. Mm. We just kind of bimble along. Oh, I'm broke. I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm depressed. <laughs> My relationship sucks. Oh, look at that. <laughs> We're just sort of bimbling along in the story with no conscious relationship to it. So, like, oh, that wasn't a very nice life. Bloody this reason or that reason or this person or that person versus, okay, this is the story that's going on now. This is the story that I'd love to see as being a part of my experience. These are the steps that I'm going to take, including getting that new circle of relationships around me, including putting some feeling behind those affirmations, including monitoring my vibrational flow, including um, being clear on what I want in the first place, including yeah. getting some skills and resources in order to more effectively create. All of these things are contributing to changing the story. They do. Yeah. And, and what you're describing, I like the way you're describing it. I'm, I'm going to kind of make a mental note of it and see how do I turn that into something that I can like turn into a, like a video or something that I can give to people and say, okay, here's like the, here, here's affirmations 3.0. It's the next generation of affirmations or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that, that takes it to the next level. Cause that, that's what I feel like is missing right now. Nothing wrong with what's been done so far. I don't mean to suggest that there's anything wrong. Just, mm-hmm. I, I just feel like it, it needs to go to a next level. Like, mm-hmm. like we've been kind of stuck at this level for a bit mm-hmm. and that's what I'm aiming at. So. Once I've got it figured out how that's going to look or how it's going to feel for me, I'll, I'll share it. I just, I think I'm putting it out there to say, okay, universe, give me some ideas. I need, I need more here. Mm-hmm. Bring it along. You know, I'm, I'm open. I'm ready. I'm ready to receive. Bring it. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. So, and I have, I feel like I have bits and pieces of it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I can, I can just almost, I can almost touch that one. You know, mm-hmm. I can almost, it's almost right there. And it has something to do with what I talked about earlier, just turning it into a fuller storyline. Hmm. Maybe, you know, I think a piece of it that I think for me is missing in a lot of, of the way that, especially the video pieces that I see are presented, they aren't actively leading you through the affirmations in most cases. They're hmm. either teaching you why affirmations are valuable or they're, you know, reading off a bunch of them. But I think it might be valuable to have something where you're kind of led through it. So repeat the following after me. I love myself in mm-hmm. the space. I love myself. You know? and, and, and then you start telling a story that way. Mm-hmm. And you're leading the person one line at a time through the story. That, that's from where my current processes, my thought processes. Come but ultimately what you're doing is you're getting them up their spiral and getting them to raise the vibration. 
Well, yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. Raising right. the vibration with a specific direction. Again, that for me is what an affirmation is. It's getting the vibration raised, getting the specific vibration alignment in flow to what I want. But the intentionality is what makes all of that happen. And I'm trying to encourage them to be a part of it rather than an observer. I think it's one mm. thing that happens with like a YouTube video. We become an observer. We sit back and watch. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like what you're doing there, Monty. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> rather than actually participating in it. Exactly. Yeah. That participation is a critical piece of it. That, I think that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out how do I encourage that viewer of that YouTube video to participate in it more than they have been in the past. Mm. because that's going to make a big difference no matter mm. where you are on the on your path no matter how little or how much development you've been doing mm-hmm. that's going to make a big big difference definitely yeah yeah so i'll let you know when i develop more but that's where i'm at so far keep me posted Looking oh to um, where it comes from yeah in the last couple of minutes i also have to mention i create a group that i haven't done anything with yet uh, I create in, in conjunction with my um, speakers page on Facebook, but there's a new group that I have tentatively called Building Self Love, and I think I'm going to modify it to also include Building Social Connections, and mm-hmm. it's all going to be about helping people do exactly that. So um, I'll, I'll put a link in uh, the description for today's show for that as well. But uh, I want to encourage people to join that group, and I haven't really started building that one out yet. I haven't started um, adding a lot of content to it. Um, Daniel, one of our listeners, actually already has asked a question there, and I answered his question, but um, not a whole lot of activity going on just yet, but there will be. So I want to encourage listeners to join the group and participate in doing some self-love building and some social connection building. Nice. That's where it's at. Mm-hmm. That's where it's good. All right. Well, then in the last minute or so, I'm going to put up uh, vibes to our friend Alex. We're thinking a lot about her and thinking about her healing and thinking about her being back. You know, I, I, I love it when she's on the show. I love it when she's doing her, you know, talking about supernatural and all that <laughs> stuff. And other stuff you don't know anything about. But I don't care because it raises my vibe and raises exactly. everybody else's vibe. I don't have to know the subject matter as long as the vibe's going up. On the, <laughs> the vibe is what matters. That's all that matters the to me. All, that's all, all that about. matters. Plus, you guys take it off in directions. I'm thinking to myself, what on earth are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but it's great. So, yeah, I'm thinking about Alex. And, and uh, Alex, if you're listening in, we'll, we're looking forward to getting you back. And come back healthy. Come back whole. We really want you. Um, and anybody else who's dealing with uh, stuff, we're, we're thinking about you too. We're putting out energy to all of you. Just grab onto the energy and ride it. Get yourself into that healthy place. You can do it. And if you find that you're up against a, a barrier like I was last night, reach out to somebody. Mm-hmm. Reach out to somebody who you know you can trust, somebody who, who's willing to be there for you because, oh, boy, is that powerful. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you're reaching out to a coach or a friend or, or a, a spouse or whatever. It's amazing. It's amazing when you do that. So, And thank you, Daniel. Thank you for bringing all these people. Thank you for bringing yourself. Thank you for bring, bringing the gifts that you gave to the LOA Today app. Thank you for all the stuff that you do. Really. Oh, you my know, pleasure. Honestly, my very pleasure. much appreciated. You, you, you have contributed so much to the show in so mm. many different ways. Really, you have. And I just marvel at it. I'm so appreciative. So, my pleasure. Thank my you very pleasure. much. And thank you also to our listeners, without whom we wouldn't have a show. Thank you to the people who tune in on the live stream. Live stream has been kind of quiet lately, but that may start picking up now that Debbie's coming along because we're going to hook networks together, so it's going to get even bigger. So thank you to all of you. We appreciate you very much. And uh, for those of you who uh, uh, didn't get a chance to say uh, goodbye to Linda, which is most of you, feel free to send a note. I'll be happy to send it her way. Um, but uh, you know, she's doing good. She's just moving on to other stuff. And That's about it. So thank you very much. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.